Hi, um, welcome to Know Thyself, to my channel. This is my, I guess this is my first video, um, formally, but, um, yeah, this is going to be quite awkward for a bit as I kind of suss out how I'm going to record these videos, the angles, um, again, getting used to, like, YouTube and helping my YouTube voice, um, but I've been lurking the, the tarot tube community for like two years, so since the pandemic, and um, I just thought it was time to finally participate because I have a lot of, I have a lot of things I want to say, um, not just on tarot decks, just sort of on tarot as a concept, as a philosophy in general. Um, but yeah, this is this is a different thing that we're doing today. This is a hashtag. I thought it'd be fun to kind of start off on something like that, and it'd be easier for me than to start on something like really heady and intense. So um, I'm starting with the good mood decks. Um, good. I, yeah, I think it is Good Mood Decks, hashtag, by uh, The Waves of Your Soul, uh, Maureen. She's actually, the reason I'm doing this one first is because, well, I mean, I think it's a great kind of one to start off with um, to put me in a good mood. But also because Maureen was the reason that I got into Tarot Tube. It was through her. She was kind of, she was a gateway to the rest of Tarot Tube. She introduced me to Lisa Pepez. I mean, it was through her that I got to know about Lisa Pepez and through Lisa Pepez that opened a door to an even wider community. And I've been lurking. I haven't been commenting, but I've been watching every video and I've just been really enjoying, really been enjoying the sense of family and the discussions um, that have been taking place on Tarot Tube, and I, I thought it was, I thought it was time I participated. Um, yeah, I really thought. I, I, I mean, I've been putting this off for months. So, <laughs> I created this channel a, almost a year ago, and I've been trying to do this for months, but I've just never found the right moment for it. Um, I don't know. I just kind of gotten in my head about it and I thought let's just let's just do it let's just do something um let's just put something out um and I think a hashtag is a good way to start off with that um so yeah I've been watching other videos in this hashtag I've been I really enjoyed um Meg's video Rose Honey Ritual I enjoyed Maureen's video of course um I I watched I think BB's at um, Pure Red Velvet. Sorry if I get any of the names wrong, but yeah, those have been sort of my reference points. My reference points. Yeah, sorry, oh, I said that right the first time. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, those have been my reference points. So yeah, let's just kind of get into it. And again, I'm gonna apologize in advance for the editing you know how it goes. So my first choice was the Chrysalis Tower um, by Holly Sarah and Tony Brooks. Um, for me, this was an obvious choice because, I mean, <laughs> just look at the card backs. Just looking at it makes me so happy. It reminds me of, um, children's books a very specific style of, of um, illustration in children's children's books from the 90s and early 2000s where sort of magic magic realism was abound and also a little bit of surrealism it was kind of seeping into um, children's book illustrations. Um, I just very vividly remember, like, uh, 
collage being a huge thing and quite surrealist collage at that. I, I, I had a very specific book. Anyway, I'm getting off topic, but I'll get to that with the next deck. <laughs> um, sorry, I have ADHD. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is a very, this is one of those very specific type of um, styles that I would see in in the books I had as as a kid. And this is probably my most grounded deck, uh, you know, my most earthy deck. I mean, no, not most grounded, it's my most earthy deck. And even so, it's quite, um, <laughs> I love this Ace of, I mean, it's called, it's been renamed the Ace of Mirrors, it's the Ace of Cups. It's still sort of f fantasy like, and yeah, it's still so earthy. Um, and it has, it kind of reinvents the tarot, reinvents the wheel, <laughs> as they say. Um, some people don't really like that, but I honestly don't mind it. I think it, you know, contained within this deck it it works um some cards still kind of retain their original meaning they they all sort of retain their original meaning in some fashion like the ten of spirals is the ten of wands you can see that kind of burden the heavy load but you know it takes on this fantasy element um i think the stone suit which is earth is the kind of the most earthy and it's so beautiful like the illustrations are just stunning it just it just i don't know but um even though it is kind of like it has that kind of celtic revival style again that was very present in sort of 90s children's books books and probably through the influence of kind of wicca and the new age um sort of entering the popular consciousness i guess um this two of mirrors is so it's just it it leaves me speechless it makes me so happy it's so evocative so yeah it's it's earthy um it's not a hard deck by any means but it's still it's still kind of transports me this is very um uh, kind of late 90s this kind of style of um it still takes me to this fantasy realm um it just it just gives me again it's not a hard deck per se but it it instantly cheers me up when i need it um it doesn't shy away from telling you you know what kind of saying what needs to be said but it delivers it in a really soft kind of compassionate way and i really like that and it's gorgeous and also possibly my favorite part of the deck is that the courts are Look at this, this is so stunning. Um, the court cards are referred to as the troop, so they're like a kind of, they're like these um, traveling, so beautiful. They're these traveling um, artists. Let me see if I can, let me just speed this up so I can get all of them. This reminds me of like, this looks like the embodiment of an Enya song. <laughs> this, this is probably, I mean, I know it bothers some people that Merlin is the fool, but it, it, I, I don't care. It's just the kind of, the very kind of old fashioned depiction of the wizard 
is so up my alley. I, I love it. It just instantly seeing this card makes me happy. Just this card alone. Okay, so I think these are all of the court cards, um, more or less. If I missed one, then it's fine. Um, they're called the Troop, and they're these, you know, they all have, sort of have their domain. And what I love about these, these court cards in particular is that I actually really like the borders on this. And then within the borders of sort of the inner borders of each card, there's just these kind of smaller illustrations that kind of reflect the energy of each of the court cards. Um, this is sort of like a um, magic carpet type Arabian Nights, the dreamer muse and you can sort of see these i don't know if you can see it well but this the artiste the queen of stones and you can sort of see that this uh, this is one of my favorites the the pilgrim that would be the page of swords and you can see a cityscape behind them um and they're just sort of walking the path and the butterfly, you know, the books, the manuscripts, the illusionist. I don't know how to pronounce this. <laughs> um, Sojourner, I think the king of cups with this kind of beautiful arabesque. Um, oh, Perfect. Yeah, this is a really good example. So the king of uh, the king of pentacles or the king of stones is the minstrel, and he has these kind of sheet music and these these kind of lutes or I guess kind of medieval instruments. The mine, the visionary, the companion the king of uh wands the knight of wands knight of spirals is a pirate and just that's so perfect and even this one you can actually see what looks like a tapestry it, it almost has that texture and that's just so genius the watcher very crone energy with the night, the woods in the background, the Akbar, and the, the healer. So that was the Chrysalis Tarot. Um, next up we have, <laughs> as you can see, the Enchanted Tarot. This is the anniversary edition that comes with the huge box, which I really usually don't care for the big boxes but this one I got specifically because of the box the anniversary um 25th anniversary edition box has a sort of uh magnetic clasp thing um and it's just just because of the the image the collage on the I know, it's just as boxes, as far as tarot boxes go, it's not that obnoxious. I mean, it's huge, but I really don't mind. Although I'm thinking of getting the smaller, the older version with the smaller cards because, um, yeah, this, this edition specifically is a little bit hard to work with because the cards are so long and, like, wide. 
Um, and I think even someone with really big hands would struggle with this one. So the guidebook is in full colour, at least for this edition. It's it's almost colour coded by, by suit as well. So you have the hearts, which are the equivalent of the cups. And I love that. I, I love that substitution. I have no qualms with it. It's just so romantic. And this is a style of collage that was very predominant, which um, actually at that time, I know this is um, Amy, sorry, I forgot to say, this is Amy Zerna and Montefaba. They're a couple um, that produce a lot of decks together. But um, of course, this is Amy Zerna's kind of uh, style, I guess, but um, like weaving tapestry and collage together. But this style was very popular at the time in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and this certainly made its way into a lot of children's books. Um, this is just so, it's just, it fulfills all my fantasies. Um, also, the fact that each uh, card has an enchantment, so it's a, it's a spell of sorts. It just makes it all that, I don't know, it just transports me. Um, it's so magical. It really is. It's so, so beautiful that I just, I just take it out to look at the cards, just flip through them. Even if I don't read with it as much as I'd like to, because it's so big. Um, let me... Also, the card backs are just, I don't know, they're so lush. I mean... <sighs> This is definitely my tarot aesthetic. I th I'm thinking of making a tarot aesthetic, like not my tarot aesthetic video. Um, and these arabesques, these flowers, um, if this was like an old world deck, sort of like a continental, like a Marseille or something, this would be perfect. Um, it, I mean, it is perfect, the Empress. I've been getting the Empress so much lately. Um, but yeah. It's just the collage work, the, it's exquisite. <laughs> but yeah, the, and it has, sort of has like a gold foiling on it. But yeah, these, these cards are massive, massive. And it's quite a chunky deck. Um, yeah. They're color coded. I am thinking. I saw um, Meg at Rose Honey Ritual trimmed her deck, and I am really, really, really tempted. Even though I don't mind the borders, but I want to be able to work with this deck. Um, and as of right now, the best I can do is sort of flip through it because it's kind of obnoxiously huge. I can't riffle shuffle it. I kind of just have to like shuffle it kind of long ways like this. And that's not really my preferred way of shuffling. Um, I like to riffle shuffle my decks, I like to bridge shuffle, and I can't do that with this. But um, yeah, that's the Enchanted Tarot. Okay, I've pushed these candles back because they feel like a fire hazard, so I'm kind of waving my decks just in <laughs> the general area and it's making me anxious. Um, this I keep in a little, this is the, oh, uh, the, well, it's called Low Scarabeo published it, republished it. It's called the um, Tower of the Master commercially as a mass market um but it's the i think it's the G giovanni bacetta um or bacetta i don't know bacetta um tarot um i do know that il, il menegello has a version of this with different coloring originally this was in black and white but i um, I am also considering getting that version. I definitely will because I love this deck so much. Like, I just, okay, can we just talk about this? 
nine of wands as a organ like a pipe organ um i just think it's so genius i don't know i is it just me or i just i don't know <laughs> Um, I really, really like the court cards in this deck. I, I like that they're pi I like the pips. I really like the pips. Um, they give me room to play. They give me room to think as well because this did come with borders. I trimmed them kind of sloppily, um, but they had keywords on them. So I still have those keywords written down somewhere um, and I sometimes refer back to them but they don't always really match up to the image because I don't really think they were intended um, to be interpreted in that way. Um, but it gives room to kind of think and I, and I like that. I like to think, I like to intellectualize. Um, for example, this card the other day, I was discussing it with my mother and how this is the Seven of Cups. Um, so the, there's five cups here and then I suppose these two urns are the two other cups. And I was kind of debating it with my mother, like what the meaning could be behind this. I mean, obviously it's a, it's an, it's a mirage, which is the key word that um was used for this card um but i kind of see like jealousy depicted in the seven of cups i don't know if anyone else sees that if you could interpret it that way um i see sort of like the these cups not receiving these kind of waters the fruit and i see kind of like jealousy i don't know it just gives me room to think and interpret the cards in a completely different way. Um, I don't know, not a lot of pip decks give you... I mean, pip decks in general do give you that flexibility, but I don't think they... I mean, like this this one in particular, I don't know. The Nine of Swords. I think that really is really evocative of the energy of the Nine of Swords. Even if, like, it's a sort of more of a Ten of Swords type image, I think it captures the feeling anyway. Um, so some of them, yeah, you really do kind of have to think, but I think this is a really great um, Knight of Cups. <laughs> I really love the court cards. Um, but look, the Five of Swords... Um, I just think, I think this was, I mean, this is not my favorite card in the deck, but I saw this card and this card sold me on the deck. I was between this and the ancient Italian tarot, which I think is the Soprafino or something. And that, that one sold me just because of how, you know, I interpret that card. Um, Il Bagat, Il Bagato, um, I don't know, and there's so many ribbons as well, I, I love the recurring, the ribbons, they're kind of just interlacing everything, they kind of, they kind of have, like, they kind of function as arabesques, if you've seen a Marseille or other pip deck, they kind of look like arabesques, and this seven of, um, ones is really interesting because it is a departure from what we it's almost like the five of wands where it feels like a competition of sorts where each person has something different to offer um and this says from one i think i've translated this and it says something to the effect of from one tree stump um different fates are formed or different you know one tree stunt leads to different forms or fates destinies i really like that interpretation it's like trying to stand out amongst <laughs> amongst other individuals that also kind of stand out on their own 
but yeah um i don't know I can, i'm gushing about this deck there's you know <laughs> the page of coins gambling i think that's really really fitting anyway um yeah that was the i was about to say that was the ancient italian that was the tower of the master or the giovanni bacetta um terrible trimming <laughs> the giovanni uh bacetta tarot title key next we have the singular medieval scapini um and it really is a singular deck i'll try and go quick on these because i'm taking way too long on each one but um this deck is yeah it also has kind of i guess the word is cold stamping it's got some silver gold foil but it's really really subtle um this deck is is, is beautiful this deck is funny like the miners especially are really really funny depictions of sort of the mundane daily lives of like a sort of like a medieval village it feels like you're stepping into the lives of a of a village um and the the mages feel really really potent um they just feel like you know when you think of like grant when you think of trumps when you think of the triumphi you really imagine these potent archetypes um, and each one feels like just holding it in your hand it just feels so like i don't know they they feel like they kind of stand on their own uh where sometimes the i think in some decks i am disappointed by the major arcana and it kind of gets lost in the deck and it doesn't feel as potent but this deck both I think both the major and the minor arcana are, you know, they each have their own magic and they just feel so, so special. And um, this does stray a bit from, from, I mean, Rider Waite Smith or, I think it's got, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, it's kind of an amalgamation of different systems. I think a lot of creative liberties were taken with this deck as well, as you can probably tell. Um, yeah, again, the minor suit is really funny. Let's see if I can... They're just kind of... Yeah. I don't really know what else to say. This slight like, deck speaks for itself. Um, I really... <laughs> this this card always makes me laugh. The um, Six of Cups, even though it looks more like a Seven of Cups, but again, this system, it gives me pause, it makes me think. Um, this is such a funny scene. I, I don't know why, it just... Um, but yeah, I... <laughs> I think I really want the book that discusses the the imagery and the symbolism behind it because it kind of goes into depth um i mean there's some sort of cabalistic associations here apparently according to the little white book but um yeah very different three of swords i guess but i can see i can see why it's the three of swords um, and this is very reminiscent of the the royal Italian decks from the 15th century, you know, the uh, Visconti and yeah. So this this always makes me happy. I love this star card. It makes me laugh. It's just it feels like it feels like people I I know, I guess. Well, don't quite know, but you know, they feel very familiar. Um, and yeah, that's the uh, 
that's the medieval medieval skibbi. Um, so the next one is the Gateway Oracle Cards by Denise Lynn. Oh, I've been completely forgetting to mention. Um, I think for some of them I haven't mentioned who the decks are by. But I mean the Scapini is by uh, Scapini. <laughs> um, the illustrator Scapini, but yeah. Um, this was, I think, the first Oracle deck I got, and before I really got a sense of what I liked in Oracle decks, and it's definitely not the, um, fluffy kind, but this is a deck I'm, you know, I, I allow to remain in my collection because I, I still love it. It makes me feel like I'm 10. <laughs> um... I don't know, it just makes me feel like a child again. I think it's a good inner child deck. It's, again, it's probably what you would consider a hug deck, a fluffy deck, but it does make me happy, so I'm including it. Um, and even though it's all the most, or mostly positive, fluffy messages, um, it just does remind me of a more innocent time in my life. So, you know, it has, it just has nice messages. It's soft. I, I really do want the other Denise Lynn um, Oracle deck. That's, I think, the Sacred Traveler. Um, just because I love this one so much. I love this. I love this. Um, but yeah, this one makes me feel like I'm a child again, and I need that sometimes. So that was the Gateway Oracle by Denise Lynn. Next we have the Flowers Tower by Grimwald. This is out of print, sadly, and very, very hard to get, and this cost me quite a bit. Um, more than I'm, more than I'm willing to really spend on a tarot deck, but regardless, um, this is a vintage deck. Um, and I think the deck hates me, but that that's another, <laughs> that's a story for another day. Um, it's from nineteen eighty nine. So this is this is not a tarot, as the name might suggest. It's more of an oracle. Um, it's got a sort of cartomantic. It's more like a cartomantic uh, system. Um, you know, with keywords and stuff. So yeah, in because I don't have that. Uh, I think it's called the Hed Hedwich Botanical. This was a more expensive alternative, I guess. So much more expensive. But um, I love this. I This does make me happy. I, li I like, I love looking at plants. I love looking at herbal illustrations. Um, and these ones are really beautiful, in my opinion. Very, very 80s kind of textbook illustrations. Um, but yeah, I just like looking at this, like laying it out, even if the messages, I mean, this has, this is quite a, a balanced deck. It has a good mix of like negative um, and positive messages. You know, you have, again, this is more of a system that is kind of like, like old school cartomancy. So you have theft losses and then Universal success, instability, separation, parting, sorrow, family. It's just really beautiful. It's so nice to lay out and I think it pairs well with a lot of tarot decks, but again, I don't seem to have, <laughs> I love this, the devil. I don't seem to have the best luck with this deck. I think it hates me. It almost always gives me like the worst, you know, worse uh, negative cards in the deck. 
um, and always the same ones. So I still have to bond with it. Um, I've, I've tried cleansing it, you know, but it doesn't really make a difference. Lavender, it's one of my favorite herbs, flowers. Um, meetings, but yeah, this is a really simple one, but I mean, just for obvious reasons, it's, it's kind of like uh, an early summer deck for me as well. I just love looking. I mean, I'm just happy to have this deck, really. Um, I was after it for so long. I never thought I was going to get it. It was just kind of one of those... It was, you know, kind of like a golden goose or like a unicorn type deck. Um, but yeah, I, I have it and... But yeah, I don't know. It just... it uh, There's not much I can say about it at all. Distrust. Um, it just makes me happy. Um, next, I have the Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides by Stephen Farmer, Stephen D. Farmer. Um, this was also a very early acquisition when I started collecting decks. Um, so this was maybe my second Oracle deck. And I really just wanted like a kind of straight to the point animal deck. <laughs> um, but this was so much more than it, it ended up being so much more than I hoped for. And I'm so glad because again, maybe it's not the type of deck I'd usually go for now, Oracle deck wise, but um it makes me happy because again, these this is so 90s the illustrations, the sort of collage. Um all the cards are different colours as well, like kind of different tints. So you don't get that um, for or fake vintage um, look that you get with some decks where, you know, they're kind of like tea stained or coffee stained, but the stains are all in the same place. Kind of like, um, I don't know, I think apparently the, oh, what's that, Anatom the anatomical terror, the antique anatomy um, has that issue. But no, this is, this is legit. <laughs> I mean, it's been done with really, it's just a very, uh, it's just a very cons considerate deck. I mean, in the sense that so much consideration has been put into it. The messages are just incredible. This speaks right through me. It always gives me exactly what I need to hear. It's not a fluffy deck. It tells me exactly what I need to hear. What I need to do, it's practical, it's probably my most grounded, down-to-earth, yeah, I'm saying this as the unicorn <laughs> appears, um, but this is my most rounded deck. This really has always just been spookily on point and told me, given me practical advice, which is what I really need. I really need that grounding. I'm very up in sort of very watery, up in the air kind of ADHD brain um, and of course the animals seeing the animals make me happy I'd love to see a larger variety but I know there are other decks that have other animals represented but I mean I think this is this is like a good amount I guess and you see animals that you wouldn't usually see represented in other decks um, so I do like that. And of course, my three-year-old nephew loves this deck. And every time he comes over, we, I take this out. And of course, because of that, I've now lost one of the cards. Um, and I can't, yeah. I'm, I'm on a whole journey to, a whole odyssey to find that misplaced card. I can't find it anywhere. It was just evaporated. But, um, it doesn't really matter because it's a deck that does, when I look at it, it reminds me of my nephew. It makes me happy because it's, it's practical. It was, I just feel really happy having this in my collection, having made this purchase early on. Um, I didn't expect it to be such a success for me, but 
yeah, you're a lot tougher than you think you are. This is something that I need, <laughs> I need like tattooed on me or something. I don't know. Anyway, that was the um, messages from your animal spirit guides. It's a bit wordy, a bit of a wordy title. But yeah. And last but not least, The Secrets of the Mystic Grove um, by Ar Arwen. Aaron, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, Lynch. And the artwork is by Mary Elaine Thomas. So I believe this is artwork that's not been made specifically for an oracle deck. It's been sort of made to fit an oracle deck, but oh my god, is this guidebook amazing uh, I just yeah this needs its own video really and this needs so much more love I don't see it talked about much but this is like a very like late spring early summer kind of deck for me it's so um Ven Ven Venusian Venusian <laughs> you really get that vibe and also I when I bought it I just kind of wanted a straightforward oracle that had keywords that were, well, straightforward. <laughs> um, they, they were just kind of, you know, they would wrap up or explain or clarify readings for me. And this does its job and more. It, it really does. I mean, it's amazing how accurate it is or, and has been with sort of acting as a sort of clarifier or kind of like, explaining the connection between two cards in, in a reading and it's also beautiful <laughs> and goes with almost anything um it's just so magical um this is one of my favorite cards and this one as well because i think it's based on the story of the six swans if I'm correct. I, I don't know. I, I can't be sure, but it does look like it is. And that's one of my favorite fairy tales of all time. Um, so yeah, it's very Venusian. It's, oh, the bunny, the bunny. There's, you know, there's animal cards. There's cards with just sort of like languid, <laughs> um, resting woman with things in their hair but it works so well as an oracle deck um i don't know it just it just really does its job it's a really good clarifier and that makes me happy i i like having oracle decks for aesthetics you know i like uh, the aesthetics of oracle decks i think they i think aesthetics in themselves um give a message but you know this beyond the aesthetics I think this is just a really effective oracle deck as well um not just the keywords but if you want to kind of dive into the guidebook it just has really good kind of prompts and it explains it actually explains the image um which I think is amazing because not all oracle decks do that um and it gives you some more to sort of think and chew on. So yeah, this would be my last, but not least, pick in my um, good mood decks. So yeah, thank you for watching my my first video, baby's first video. Um, thank you for coming along the ride. Um, it was really, it, I mean, I'm in such a good mood now just I mean I think the tag works it has magic to it because I'm in a good mood I was kind of anxious before I started filming and now I'm in a really good mood I'm really chatty chatty than I more chatty than I usually am chattier um but yeah it was really nice to share these decks that I don't know I I see some of them talked about I don't see others talked about as frequently and I just kind of wanted to share that good energy, those good vibes, those vibes with um, 
the Tyrant community. I wanted to participate in the discussions and this is kind of like my doorway into it, right? So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, and till next time, bye.